Well, hello. Happy April Fool's Day. Um, enough people are being silly and goofy around here, but I didn't really want to do anything like that today. So uh, to just show you how boring and dull I want to be, I want to read a book that I've already read on this channel before. It's a good book, though, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it again. This book is, of course, Caps for Sale. A Tale of a Peddler, Some Monkeys, and Their Mus Monkey Business. Told and illustrated by Esther Slobodkina. Caps for Sale. Look at all those hats. I definitely wouldn't recommend wearing all those hats at the same time. Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody even wanted a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he, and he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there. So he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. Hmm, something's different. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked in back of him, no caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey. On every monkey was a gray, or a brown, or a blue, or a red cap.
The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. This made the peddler angry. So he shook both hands at them and said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their hands back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, You monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. But then, each of the monkeys pulled off his cap. And all the gray caps, and all the brown caps, and all the blue caps, and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So, the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. The end. All right, and that was Caps for Sale. I hope that was sufficiently boring for you on this April Fool's Day. Now let's move on to another story. Now. It is April Fool's Day, so even though we're not going to be silly, I'm going to read about someone who was, someone whose job it was to be silly. This story is called The Runaway Clown. And it begins with a poem. The circus is coming to town. Boys and girls wave bright balloons. Hurdy-gurdies grind out tunes. Poodle dogs in pinafores dance to drum and bugle corps. Tumblers tumble in the ring while trapeze artists catch a swing. Elephants and ponies prance while clowns and pretty ladies dance. The circus is in town.
The circus was in Havana, a city in Cuba. Willie, the hobo clown, sat on an orange crate in his dressing room, waiting for his part in the circus to begin. Willie had never been to Cuba before. He gazed in the mirror to see how he would look to the circus crowd. He looked so sad with his painted mouth turned down that he looked funny. He wore a battered derby hat and a tattered coat that was held together by dozens of safety pins. His putty nose was round and red, and his chin was dark with beard. While he waited, he dreamed of children laughing, but he also worried. He thought, what if people think I'm making fun of them? Dressed this way, they might not see me as an innocent tramp who wouldn't hurt a flea. I saw a lot of people today in the streets of Havana who were dressed in clothes shabbier than these. They may not see anything funny in these old clown clothes. Backstage, a man called, Okay, Willie, you've got 15 minutes before the show begins. Willie was frightened. He feared that the people of Cuba would not like him. He was especially afraid the boys and girls would not like him. Earlier that day, before he had dressed in his clown outfit, Willie had wandered through the streets. On the steps of a large church, he had heard men and women speaking a language he could not understand. They wore ragged clothing. Most of them had no shoes. They were talking in the shadows of the steeples as they whittled sticks and hummed a sad song. They stared at Willie in his fine clothing. The strange looks on their faces made him walk on quickly. Farther on, he had seen some boys playing ball and shouting in Spanish, the language of the people of Cuba. As Willie approached, one boy in a turn one boy in a torn shirt threw the ball too far. It rolled into the street. Willie picked up the ball. It was an old softball with half the cover torn off. He tossed it back and called, here you are. All the boys had stared at him. They didn't understand English. Willie wondered if the people would understand his clown act. Then Willie had hurried on, but for a long time after his walk, he seemed to hear the sound of boys laughter and Spanish chatter and the sad humming of the people on the cathedral steps. Willie's thoughts were brought back to the present when the man backstage shouted, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Willie got up from in front of his mirror and walked to the curtain that hid him from the circus floor. He peeked through a small opening at his first circus crowd in Cuba. He became more worried. Well, he said to himself, I'll soon find out if they like me. They say that when the people of Cuba get angry, they really get angry. I'd better be sure to duck if they throw tomatoes. Okay, Willie, you're on, the backstage man said. Willie, the hobo clown, took his broom and walked through the curtain opening onto the circus floor. While he waddled in his oversized shoes, a small, a small spot of light appeared on the ground in front of him. Well, let me show you him looking through the curtains here. All right, a small spot of light appeared on the ground in front of him. Willie began to sweep at the puddle of light with his broom. He tried hard, but he couldn't sweep it away. The light moved along in front of him. He followed the light, sweeping harder, but still he couldn't sweep it away. He looked at the people in front of him. They weren't laughing. He stared sadly into their faces. They seemed restless. He lifted his battered derby to them. He leaned on the broom handle and watched them. The people began to wave their arms, stamp their feet, and pound their seats. He swept at the light again and then looked up. The stamping was louder. The people began to hiss. They hissed louder and louder. Soon the whole crowd was hissing together. Then someone began shouting, Piazzo! 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 E echoed through the hall. One by one, the people in the crowd stood up and yelled, Piazzo! 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 Willie forgot about the puddle of light. He forgot this was a circus. His only thought was that these people didn't like him. He dropped his broom. He ran behind the curtains and disappeared from the ring just as he had hurried away from the people in the streets earlier that day. He walked to the far end of the building, as far away as he could get from the noise, but he could still hear the hissing in his mind. Then he came to a window. He opened it. The sudden breeze chilled him. He looked outside at the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. He felt sad because he thought the people of Cuba did not like him. While he was looking sadly at the waves, someone came up behind him. 
Will he? He turned to see another clown, a friend. Hey, Willie, what's the matter? Why did you run off? I didn't think they liked me, said Willie. The people didn't want me. That's silly, said his friend. No, they let me know by stamping and hissing and waving and by calling me names. Oh, is that all? laughed the other clown. Willie, you're joking. No, said Willie. Yes, yes, you are mistaken. Willie's friend paused. Then he smiled broadly. You're mistaken, Willie. They were stamping because they were impatient. The circus didn't start on time. You have to expect that sometimes when you're the first one on. Willie stared at his friend. But why did they yell Piasso at me? Why shouldn't they? said his friend. Piasso means cloud, excuse me, Piasso means clown in their language. Well, why were they hissing? Every little boy and girl was hissing and waving me and waving me away. Aha, Willie, said his friend. I see you don't know these people too well. That's their way of cheering you. They do like you. In Cuba, the people wave their hands to get your attention. The hissing is the way they yell, hooray. Willie remained silent. They wanted to get your attention, Willie. Each child wanted you to be his own special clown. Willie, the hobo clown, looked at his friend for a moment. Then he straightened his worn shirt. He fastened the clothespin tie clip and he pulled at his ragged coat. And as he cocked his little brown derby hat, he turned away from the other clown and walked back through the curtain toward the circus ring. He carried a head of cabbage in his hand. He began nibbling on a cabbage leaf. He walked over to the first row of seats. As he walked up a few rows, he gazed into the faces of the people. One by one, they turned to watch the sad-looking tramp. He held out his hand with a, with a piece of green leaf. A little boy helped himself and gulped the cabbage down. The little, the little boy's mother said, Gracias. Willie knew that gracias meant thank you, and he tipped his cap. Everyone around began to laugh. They began to wave and to hiss. They called out, Piasso. From that moment on, Willie had a hard time pretending he was a sad clown. He was filled with the happiness that comes with new friendships. The people of Cuba loved him. And there he is. There's an epilogue. I'll tell you about this man in just a moment here. In real life, Willie was Emmett Kelly, one of America's most famous and beloved clowns. As a boy, Emmett wanted to draw cartoons. His favorite cartoon character was a hobo he named Willie. When Emmett grew up, he joined the circus and became his own living cartoon, Willie the Hobo Clown. He brought to the pub public a lovable tramp who never lost hope. In his own life story, Emmett Kelly wrote about his first visit to Cuba in 1949. Quote, and when I boarded a plane to return to Florida, I thought I would like to come back again, which I did several times. And that's the end of The Runaway Clown. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.